Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're going to do a top 10. Topic of this top 10, tag to the future. And I know thank you to my cousin John for the awesome name for this. I was struggling trying to think of a cool name for it. Um, basically this is another recommendation from our good friend Bucky749 and his recommendation was basically a top 10 list of tag teams from the past that would work well today. So with that being said, let's jump right into it with our number 10, Buff Bagwell and Two Cold Scorpio. Now, you are going to notice that some of these tag teams were successful in their time, some of them not so much. That kind of went into the rankings here, and you'll see as we go along where I think even if they were successful for their time, they're, they'd be more successful now. So anyway, I digress. Back to what I was saying about Buff Bagwell and Two Cold Scorpio. Two Cold Scorpio way, way ahead of his time. One of the absolute legendary high flyers in all of wrestling. Buff Bagwell would go on later in his career to be more of a star than what he was during his tag team. Um, just a fantastic team. Two young guys. Two extremely gifted guys. Uh, two guys that I don't think really get the, the respect they deserve. And I thought they were an awesome team. I think they would be perfect in this generation with the way that Buff Bagwell could talk and his gimmick and Two Cold Scorpio's style. His Everything about Two Cold, I think, would be perfect this in this generation. So, to me... I think they'd be perfect. Number nine. The Beverly Brothers slash Des Destruction Crew. If you watched AWA in the dying days of the promotion, you'll remember the Destruction Crew. And they were kind of a really good tag team in, in the AWA. They came to WWF at the time and became the Beverly Brothers, which... Not as successful. Then they went on to be, you know, basically job guys after that. But to me, I always liked their look. I thought their style was good. They were a nice, big bruising team along the likes of, like, Powers of Pain and the Road Warriors. A team much like that. I thought that they really didn't get a fair shot, especially with the gimmick of the Beverly Brothers. It was in that era that everybody had a gimmick that was somewhat bad. Unfortunately, it didn't show their talent. I think if you would have kept them as a destruction crew, and I know Vince McMahon likes to change everything, but if they would have been the destruction crew, I think they would have had a bigger impact in the WWF. Alas, it wasn't to be. Now our number eight, the Body Donnas, Skip and Zip. Or Chris Candido and Dr. Tom Pritchard. With, along with Sonny, who was part of the package. If you listen to people talk, and you've listened to shoot interviews or interviews of any wrestler that's interacted with either of these two guys, Dr. Tom Pritchard's considered one of the great minds in all of wrestling. Chris Candido's considered one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time. I think they kind of, much like the Beverly Brothers, got hampered with a gimmick that wasn't that great, that kind of didn't help them, didn't do them any favors. However, if you were to put these two guys in today's timeline, they'd be a team much like FTR. They'd be more of the mat-based, ground-and-pound type team. I could easily see these guys working in AEW and WWE, New Japan, anywhere, really, at this time rate, if you took these two guys when they were the body dogs, and not necessarily that gimmick, but just the two talents, I really think that they would thrive nowadays. I think you would see a much better version of them, and I know they had won the WWF tag titles, but still, I think they would be a better version now than what they were then. I think they'd be a perfect team to go up against the Usos, the New Day, uh, Young Bucks, any team, the Grill is a Destiny, any team in any company would, uh, would have awesome matches with them. Now, our number seven, another 
another uh, team where both the guys were awesome and both arguably had better careers as solos. The Young Pistols, also known as the Wild-Eyed Southern Boys, Tracy Smothers, and Brad Armstrong. And, again, two guys that are criminally underrated, two really good wrestlers. I, again, if you took these two guys and work them in today with the style and the pacing that we have nowadays, Armstrong would be mo e a very easy fit into that. Tracy Smothers also... They both were coming into their own, and they really worked the gimmick. It would be, they would work really well in maybe like a faction with someone like Hangman Page. Um, and if you didn't want to do that traditional Southern Boys type gimmick, they don't need to. Both of these guys were fantastic wrestlers. Again, like you've seen already, a lot of what I'm judging this on is their ring style. These two were two of the top wrestlers in the world at the time. Unfortunately, it never re this team never really seemed to gain a hold. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they renamed themselves a couple times during the run. But anyway, and also WCW was in a state of influx at the time. I think they changed booking three times during their run. So Young Pistols really weren't a priority. Now coming off of that, our number six. Two guys who solo, separate from each other, had way better careers than they did as a team. Tito Santana and Rick Martel as Strike Force. Strike Force, again, it was another team kind of doing the same thing the Fantastics were doing, doing the same things that the Rock and Roll Express were doing, but doing it in the WWE where there was a premium at the time in big hulking bodybuilder types. Not saying that either of these two guys was small, but they were smaller for their time frame. I believe if you put Strike Force into this era, they would get over huge. They'd get over massively. Uh, Tito Santana now, if you put Tito Santana into this generation, come on, he would be a top guy. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Tito Santana probably would be a world champion now. Strike Force as a team, fantastic team. I thought they were amazing. They had great matches with everybody they wrestled. And I really think that, again, much like the, the whole point of this, if you brought them to now, I think their style matches more what we have in pro wrestling now than it did back then in the, the mid-80s in WWF, which was the land of the Giants. You know, coming off of that, our number five. Butch Reed and Ron Simmons, a.k.a. Doom. I love Doom. Doom is one of my favorite tag teams of all time. I wish Doom had a, a longer run. I love Ron Simmons. Butch Reed, I really like. Uh, I really... I think that if you would take, were to take Doom, Doom would be that perfect... At the time, they weren't that much bigger, or if they were, they were only a little bit bigger than most of the guys. But if you put them now, Doom would Doom would be to wrestling what the Road Warriors were in the 80s. Doom could be that tag team now, and they, they're believable, and they're hard-hitting, and they would be a perfect tag team to wrestle in New Japan, to wrestle everywhere, basically. I mean, they, there's not a place they couldn't wrestle, but I think they would fit best... In New Japan, in World Tag League, could you imagine Doom going up against Dangerous Techers or Doom versus the Gorillas of Destiny? How great those matches would be. I really, really enjoy them, and I think, again, it's the whole point of this. If you brought them now, they would be ten times more successful than they were back then. Now, our number four, the world's greatest tag team. Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. These guys are kind of one of the newer tag teams on here. One of the teams that is close to this generation, but not quite. Shelton Benjamin, I so underrated. Charlie Haas, also underrated. I really think that these guys didn't quite get what they deserved. I think if they were in this era or any other era... 
you and that, that had a focus on tag team wrestling, we would talk about these guys as being a top two or three tag team of all time. They'd be right up there with the Road Warriors. They'd be up there with the Midnight Express, with the Dudley Boys, with any team you could think of. There wasn't anything they couldn't do, whether it be mat wrestling, whether it be high flying, whether it be fantastic feuds. They, I will say they were a little bit subpar when it came to mic skills, but as a tag, tag teams... Tag teams don't really need to be that great on the mic. I mean, it is a plus if you are, but it's not necessarily the only thing that makes a tag team successful. And it's not something that's going to hamper a tag team. So to me, again, I think they would be a great tag team to have in this generation. I would love to see some of the dream matches that they could pull off with them too. Just a fantastic team. Now our number three. The team that wrestled the, the style closest to what we have now in their time frame, Mark Jindrak and Sean O'Hare. The Natural Born Thrillers, to me, all of them, I thought were the next generation of wrestling. And I really believe if WCW would have went along and they were the homegrown talent for WCW, these guys would have been the equivalent of the John Cena's and Randy Orton of WCW. They would have been that good and that, that well taken care of. Unfortunately, since the WWF won the war, WWE won the war, and took these guys in, they never really quite lived up to their potential. I know jindrak has gone into Mexico and became a massive star there. Sean O'Hare, he's one of those what could have been guys. But to me, that tag team was fantastic. Just the stuff they could do at the size that they were, it kind of reminds me of like a Keith Lee, what Keith Lee can do now. Or like a Damian Priest. Damian Priest has a lot of the same, same type style as these guys had. And I think they would fit so perfectly with this generation of talent. I'd love to see them in this time frame. Again, I know I keep saying that. It's the whole point of this, and I really understand, but I, it just hammers home how far kind of ahead of the curb these guys were, that they were putting on fast-paced, flippy-style matches back in a generation where that wasn't really the norm outside of the cruiserweight division. Now, coming from that, our number two. Probably the biggest glow-up on anybody on here. The Orient Express, and I'm specifically talking about the version that's um, Pat Tanaka and Kato. Kato also Paul Diamond, who previously they were bad company in the AWA before becoming the Orient Express in, in WWF at the time. If you don't believe me how good the Orient Express was, I forget what Wrestlemania it is, but they have a match on one of the Wrestlemanias. It's the opening match against the Rockers. And they stole the show. They were Them, them and the Rockers were the best match on the night. Um, Pat Tanaka, criminally underrated. Such a great wrestler. Um, Paul Diamond, another really great wrestler, as Kato in this case. I like the Orient Express version better than the Bad Company version. The Bad Company version feels dated in 80s hair metal. Whereas the Orient Express, I think, could work today. I think it would be an interesting thing, kind of having the one guy with a mask and the other guy without a mask. It, to me, it would work perfectly. And I loved their skill and their, their talents. They were one of the more faster-paced teams at the time. I think it would fit perfectly with everything that's going on right now. Now, before we get into our number one, we do a little thing on our top tens here called the best of the rest. And basically, it's things that were considered for the list, but for whatever reason didn't quite make it. First up, the tag team that inspired this list, the Blue Bloods, uh, Bobby Eaton and William Regal. This is what inspired Bucky749 to mention this off of my William Regal, top ten William Regal moments review or a top 10 I mean and uh, for for the Blue Bloods they were so good and William Regal so good and Bobby Eaton one of the greatest wrestlers of all time 
no doubt about it. In in ring from bell to bell, Bobby Eaton is there's no one better than him skill wise. There's people that are better at him than other aspects, but in the ring, there are people that are equal. There's no one better than Bobby Eaton. Bobby Eaton's one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. William Regal, one of the great overall talents of all time. Just another fantastic team that kind of got lost in the shuffle, kind of were pushed back behind the Outsiders, behind the Hulk Hogan stuff, behind the Dungeon of Doom stuff. Kind of forgotten to, with time, but to anybody that watched them, they were definitely enjoyable. Now, next up on our best of the rest, the Islanders. I forget, it was Tama, Tama and Haku, I believe is what they were going by. I, it's been a long, long time. Again, Haku. How can you go wrong? And this team was really awesome. I really enjoyed them. It's kind of one of those things that, uh, that it's kind of lost in time how good they were. The Islanders were so good, especially with Bobby Heenan as their manager. I think they would fit. Again, they were one of the faster-paced teams. But with what we know about Haku now, can you imagine this team now against, like, the Good Brothers? Could you imagine seeing the Islanders going up against a team like like the New Day? It would be perfect. There were the Usos. Islanders are... The Usos are basically the Islanders for this generation, except where they've had more of an opportunity to become more successful. But I loved everything about the Islanders. I think they were perfect. I thought they were a great team. They really deserved more than what they got. Last but not least on our best of the rest, probably the most controversial team on here. And we've already included a team that had uh, <laughs> Confederate flags on their gear, which the Young Pistols, if you're not familiar, had at points that... But I digress. The most controversial team on here... PG-13, J.C. Ice, and Wolfie D. Yes, the gimmick was silly. Yes, the rapping was kind of goofy, even for its time. But the guys behind it were super talented. And they never really got a fair share in the big leagues. In Memphis, they were a big deal. In WWE and WCW and ECW, they were never nothing because they were smaller. In this generation, with the way they could talk, they would be such great heels. Could you imagine these guys up against, like, the Young Bucks and how they would interact with them, or FTR, or versus Proud and Powerful? They would be so good now. You could draw so much heat with these two guys. Um, just the fact, uh, J.C. Ice, Jamie Dundee, he's a heat magnet. He's... And I know, he said a ton of controversial stuff and done a ton of controversial things. That's why I said, probably the most controversial team on here. But I think that they would be perfect now. They would be the perfect heel team for this generation. And a team that could really get some good heel heat would be, the, would be PG-13. Now, before we go to our number one, please hit like, comment, share... And if you haven't subscribed already and you like what we do, what I'm doing here, click that subscribe button. I would definitely appreciate it. You don't know. That helps us, us creators immensely. Even if you, after you go watch this video, whatever videos you go down to YouTube wormhole and watch next. If you like what you see, like, comment, share, and subscribe to them too. Because it really helps creators, whether they're smaller or bigger. It really helps them out in the YouTube algorithms. With all that being said, time for our number one, Jay Youngblood and Ricky Steamboat. Before Ricky was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and a massive star and an NWA champion and a, one of the great Intercontinental Champions of all time, he was part of one of the greatest tag teams of the 1980s and probably one of the most underrated tag teams of all time. Him and Youngblood would be so perfect nowadays. First off, there is, again, much like I said with Bobby Eaton, much like I said with a lot of these guys, 
there is no one in wrestling that would be a better tag team talent wise than Jay Youngblood and Ricky Steamboat. If you're not familiar with them, go search them out. They're on, I know they're on a lot of the old Jim Crockett promotion stuff. So I believe they're on the first Starcade. Um, I could be wrong with that. Um, but they, they, to me, as much as I love Ricky Steamboat as a solo wrestler, I love Jay Youngblood too. And I really wish that Jay Youngblood could have reached the pinnacles that Ricky Steamboat re reached by himself. Their tag team was so good. Their matches with the Briscoe brothers were amazing. Everything about them was, was top-notch. They, Like I said, they would be the top tag team in all of wrestling right now. It wouldn't be the Young Bucks. It wouldn't be the Uso brothers. It would be Steamboat and Youngblood. And there's no question in my mind that they would be the best tag team out there. Hence why they're number one on this list. Hence why I believe if I had a time machine and I was picking up tag teams from the past to bring to this time frame, they'd be the first team I'd go back and get. But with all that being said, I want to say thank you again to Bucky749 for mentioning this. Thank you for, for your comments. Again, I really appreciate when people comment, like, and share on this, and definitely when they subscribe. So please, again, like all the YouTubers say, go and do all that fun stuff. And if you watch this far, I know you enjoy this video. If you watch this far, it's going to be dropping. I mentioned my cousin John a little bit earlier that he came up with the name for this when I was, when I was tossing around what I should name this. When this video drops, it is going to be on my cousin John's birthday. So if you've watched this far into the video... Put in the comments, happy birthday, John. John, I love you. You're one of my best friends in the whole world, as well as being one of my favorite cousins in the whole world. Thank you for your help in naming this, and thank you again, Bucky, for giving me the inspiration. With all that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.